What's up, everybody? What's good? What's good, everybody? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? This is your brother, Prince Cree. I am excited about the day, and welcome to the Prince Cree podcast. I am excited, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, live in effect, all right? I am the author of the best-selling book, Once Upon a Time in the Projects, The Lost and Found. It is a series. It is a series, and that is the first series that has already reached 1,500 1, 500 copies sold. Hand claps. Hand claps, hand claps. I love it. I love it. I'm hanging out, right? Um, my Dallas Cowboys, they won Thursday night football to the Giants, New York Giants or whatever they want to say. And wasn't that impressed with the win, but is a win, is a win, is a win, is a win. Um, but I'm low key with, 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 with sports this year. I'm saying I'm not going to go crazy over what the Cowboys are doing. None of that. I'm just going to stay low key. I let Stephen A. Smith be hyped on the Cowboys. He He's trolling the Cowboys, laughing, <laughs> not realizing he's blowing the brand up. So Uncle Jerry don't care if you just talk bad about him. Bad publicity is better than no publicity. So each time Stephen A. Smith be clowning the Cowboys, he don't realize he's bringing the stock up. So thanks, Stephen. I can't clap for Stephen A. Smith. Uh, I'm low-key hater, real low-key Dallas Cowboys fan, but he don't realize he's blowing the Cowboys brand up. Okay, yes, yes, Stephen. You think you're trolling them. You think you're just going in on them, but you're blowing the brand up, and you don't even realize it. <laughs> but um, the Cowboys won, and that's fine. So I'm hanging out with a friend, some of my friends, and one of my friends, Barry, he's, uh, he's a diehard Eagles fan, and we at the Eagles Nest, and um, we're looking at the game, and the Eagles are getting blown out. And so they was about to come back, and, and I'm sitting there, sitting there saying, okay, here's the comes the Eagles. And one lady in the side from Philly, North Philly, shout out to North Philly. That's where my family's from, North Philly. Shout out, shout out to my family members up in Philly. And that's where she's from. And one of the things she said is that we're a fourth quarter team. And I said, you can't bank on that. You can't keep banking on that. So they lost, and so I'm happy for that. Um but I was there promoting my my upcoming book signing here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, October the, the 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the A-plus mailbox and more. If you can see this right here, if I can tell this, if I can get that there so you can see it on it without the light shining on it. You know what I mean? I do what is called a live audio book um, experience. It's like a tiny desk and... I'm out here promoting it. And I'm out here with my brother Shala Sha Sharik, the Eye of Sha. And um, thanks to Asha. Hand claps for my brother Asha. He's rocking his clocks and you know, he's always being fresh to death. I said, Sha, we are at a, a, a sporting joint. Where's your sports stuff? He's a he's a Kansas City Chief fan and he he's dressed like he's getting ready to go to Sensations or or the Cheetahs in Patterson. I said, Sha, yeah, 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 you're killing me. But he had to go somewhere today. But thanks to my brother Sha Sharik for for passing out um my um flyer to my book signing. When I do these book signings, right, they're not just me sitting at a desk talking about I'm an author, blah, blah, blah. What I do is what it's called like a tiny bookshelf, tiny desk performance. And this coming October the 12th at the A plus and more um, facility in Virginia Beach, I'm doing a dedication to Luther. Luther Vandross. Luther, God bless Luther. He was born and raised in New York City. He grew up in the Albert E. Smith housing projects in New York City. And so I'm taking these project kids that, that made something out of themselves to inspire folks. And so when you say once upon a time in the projects, there was a legendary R&B singer named Luther R. Vandross, you know what I mean? So I, I, I'm dedicating the book signing to Luther. So what I do, I play these, I do these monologues and I do these things that can kind of pay respects and homage to Luther Vandross. I did it where it brought Mary J. Blige to life 
with Juanita Wynn and, and Chance, um, the MC representing Bayside Arms. So I do these things to, to, to bring life, to bring my pages to life. Once upon a time in the projects, the lost and found, you can see it on my shirt. I move the mic to the side. You can see the book here. It's available right now on Amazon.com. Search Once Upon a Time in the Projects, The Lost and Found. Um, but when I do the book signing, I don't like to sit at a desk. I guess that's the ADHD in me. I don't like to sit at no desk with a pen coming. What's your book about? And I tell you about the book. I like to express through spoken words, express through songs, and just bring my pages to life. Because in this book, I talk about Jay-Z from Marcy. I talk about Nas and Jungle from Queensbridge. Marley Marr and Roxanne Shante from Queensbridge. Mob Deep from Queensbridge. Wesley Snipes. I talk about Teddy Riley from St. Nick Projects. I talk about Luther from Albert E. Smith Projects. I talk about, um, you know, Mike Tyson. I just talk about most Def and Ghostface and Ghostface and Mary J. Blige from the projects there in Yonkers. I just speak about us project kids. That, you know, I just doesn't dwell in my projects and Alexander Hamilton projects, AHP, The Pound in Patterson, New Jersey. I speak about projects all over the world, like talking about, um, you know, the projects in good where Good Times was filmed at. I talk about the projects in, 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 in Louisiana. I talk about the projects in Fort Greene. I talk about all the projects all over the world. The projects here in Virginia Beach. They sat arms. I just talk about the projects Pernell Whitaker grew up with. God bless Pernell. Um, I speak about all projects, but I don't just glorify what we did and getting that money and all of that stuff. I speak about mental health. I speak about mental wellness. I speak about untreated ADHD, PTSD, depression, anxiety, and the whole nine. I speak about how we was pushed to the side and let diseases come in. And my projects in 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 in, in Patterson, New Jersey, in Alexander Hamilton projects, we were sort of known as the projects where AIDS were at, and that part bothered me, because when I said I was from the projects, a girl would be like, "Oh, it's AIDS up there." <clears throat> so that was the stigma, and that was the the rumor or the things that we had to battle when we went outside the projects. So that's what this podcast is about, launching things and promoting things that benefit prosperity with, with folks out there. So I'm going to talk to you today about three areas that I would like for you to focus on. <coughs> Excuse me. And these three areas is dealing with how can you reshape your mind? I want you to consider readings again. My favorite scripture is Romans 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By the renewal of your mind. I want you to focus on how do you reshape your mind? How do you reboot? How do you restart? There's things I need for you to ask God to give you. Your mind represents the toolbox. And in your toolbox, what is, what is needed? Tools. So there's three areas I want you to focus on. And I want you to put this or add this to your daily routine. The first area that I need you to focus on and ask God to give you the tool or the tools to fix it, to fix it. Taking me for an example, what do I need fixing? Listening is an area that I ask God to give me the tool or the tools to fix it. Fix my listening skills, Lord. Because there's a time where I hear what you're saying. You can give me constructive criticism with a vision if I share with you or my dreams. And I automatically would jump to a defense because I feel that this is something God has given me, but not realizing maybe God has given you me. So I just block it out. 
I'm quick to block out those who are giving me constructive criticism. I turn a deaf ear to it. I don't want to hear nothing. I'm passionate about winning. I'm passionate about prospering. And you can't tell me Jack because I'm the one that made up My Life Matters. I'm the one that God gave me this book. I'm the one that God gives me the tiny desk, tiny bookshelf. So what are you talking about? Won't you do you? Now, there's a time where you got to discern and knowing that that person is doing that to hate. That person is saying that to distract you. So I'm asking God, give me the tool or the tools to listen. And in the process of me listening to discern. So I'm asking God to give me the tools to fix my discernment, to fix my listening skills. So I say it back to you. What is it that you need fixing? One of the things I like when Pastor Derek, he says, face it and fix it. First of all, you got to ID it. You got to face it head on. Look at eye to eye, eye to eye. I need my listening skills fixed. I had to face it in order for me to fix it. And so as I'm facing things that I need to fix, my temper, listening, my wife can tell me, hey, I handle this and I think I can go on and handle it myself. I was wrong. I didn't handle a situation like I thought I could because I just lacked the listening skill or just taking what someone is telling you to do as a form of helping you. So I'm using me as an example. What is it that you need God to help you to fix? Is it your attitude? Is it your time management? Is it your health mentally and physically? You know, I don't. The next area I want you to focus on and ask God to give you the tool or the tools, it is to break it. Break it, break it, break it. And I know you're saying, Brother Prince Cree, uh, first of all, pump your brakes. You just told me to fix something. Now you want me to fix? Now you want me to break what you just told me to fix? Hey, slow your roll. Let me explain. There's a wall of depression. There's a wall of generational curse. There's a wall of fear that's in front of you, that is stopping you, blocking you from prospering. You need to ask God to give you the sledgehammer to break it, break down that wall of depression, the wall of suicide ideations. Ask God to give you the tools to break it, break it, break it. In order for you to have something new, you got to break something old. Break it. Break it. The next area I need you to focus on is to ask God to give you the tool or the tools to build it. And I know you right now you're sitting there saying, uh, I'm very confused right now. You want me to break something? Now you want me to build something? Yeah. Because you need to build a new Foundation, build a new wall, build a new life, build new connections. So ask God to give you the tool or the tools to build it. So you need to fix some stuff. You need to break some stuff and you need to build some stuff. For those are the tools that goes inside of your toolbox. I'm going to close out with this life lesson life coach idea or something you can use that can help you. I was a sales manager and most of my job, jobs I had in call centers where I was the manager of sales. And one of the things I came up with was an, was an exercise where I taught my salespeople about how to identify who they are or who they were or who, who are they? Sometimes people don't even know that they own gift or they own calling. They don't know anything about it. They don't know who they are and what they're supposed to do. So I'm going to give you three items on top of these three areas. I need you the three tools. I'm going to, I'm going to give you these items and with some descriptions and you tell me which one of these items best fit who you are. The first item is clay, Play-Doh or clay. 
clay, the functionality of clay is to reshape, is to mold, is to make something from nothing into something, right? You can, you can, you can shape something, make an, it's, it's all about your imagination. Whatsoever your mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. You put it in your mind, you can put it in reality. So if you take some clay, is this clay is representing who you are? Can you be reshaped? Can you be coached? Can someone shape and mold you to what it is you are or whoever you are? Now, keep in mind, you have the potential. I'm just a person that's sculpturing, that's that's on the potter's wheel. You're the, you're the clay that's on the potter's wheel, the mud that's on that potter's wheel. I am just the the author, the author, the the artist, or the sculpture, the person that's going to shape and mold you. That's moving on the wheel. That is this. That's that's going through the process of shaping you. Are you that mud, or you're that clay? Can you be reshaped? Can you be coached? Are you willing to accept someone helping you gain access to your potential? Are you that clay? Are you that mud on the potter's wheel? The next item I want you to focus on and want you to tell me if this is you. This is really good. I'm telling you, if this is you, raise your hand. If this is you, say, I'm that. Because this next item is very, very unique. It does a few things, right? It does two things. The functionality of this item, or let me just tell you what this item is. This item is a sponge. <laughs> it is a sponge. Some people think if you're sponging off me, you're using me. But in, let's, let's switch this to being positive. If you are a sponge, that means you can soak in some stuff. That you're able to soak in and, 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 and bring in some things. A sponge functionality is also to clean some stuff. Wipe off the counter from germs. Clean that plate. But the, the great thing about a sponge is the sponge has the ability to squeeze out the imperfections. Squeeze out the things that are wrong. The germs. The yucky stuff. Are you that sponge? Are you able, do you have the ability to soak in some good stuff from someone that's ministering to you? Can you soak in some stuff that your past, that your, your, your pastor or your school teacher is talking to you about? Are you able to soak in what your counseling, your counselor or your therapist is saying? Can you just soak in some good stuff? Are you coachable? Are you able to be that person that can soak it, soak it, soak it in? But what's not good if you're listening to stuff that is, that's downgrading you, some music that is in your spirit that's talking about violence. Are you able to soak it in and squeeze it out? Because you don't need that. That can't be a part of your elevation. Are you able to soak it in and squeeze it out? You, are you the sponge? Are you the sponge? Finally, the last object or item on the docket is the pen, the pen, the ink pen, this type of pen. The functionality of this pen is that this pen is able to write it down, make it plain. The pen can also be the person that can write that book to create this thing. Write your own story. Tell your own story. Are you the pen? Are you the person that's able to tell your own story? Or do you need someone else to come in and dictate who you are and what you are? Are you that person that can write your own check? Are you that person can write checks? Are you the boss? Are you the person that can create things and write stuff and be a part of writing life and changing the world? The pen is the person, the person that can be like the pen has the ability to change the world by writing it, by writing ideas that can outlive you. The iPhones that we use, Jobs wrote it down, made it plain, and now he's living on this earth forever. Are you that person that can write your own story, write your own pain? 
Are you the pen? Are you the pen? That's my message on the Prince Cree podcast. I'm telling you, I'm excited because it's getting ready to open up. I just want to give you um, some introduction of what it is I'm be doing. Please, please, please go get my book. Once upon a time in the projects, the lost and found. It is here. It is here. It is here. It is here. This is how it is. This is my building on the front cover. Go get the book. It's on Amazon right now. Once upon a time in the projects, the lost and found. That is the first series, the lost and found. And the next series is Breaking the Curse. That is coming out in 2025. I'm excited already. I have um I'm I got the book right now. Um it's in front of me right now. It is um, consists of five chapters, and in the chapters is talking about fix it. It is talking about he gets it from his daddy. It's talking about break it, and then it talks about she gets it from her mama, and then it's build it. It is a it, this will be a hard cover, and I am excited about this. Really, man, I'm really excited about this. When I do these books, it is to promote mental health and mental wellness. And the storyline starts from my house and projects in Patterson, New Jersey, and it goes across the world. Get that book. First of all, the first book, Lost and Found, go get it. It's on Amazon right now. But if you are in the Hampton Roads area, please come out October the 12th at um, 1832 Kentsville Road in Virginia Beach, Virginia at the A Plus Mailbox and more, the family-owned, black family-owned business and the heart. Um, in, in, in the suburban area in the 7th District of Virginia Beach. <laughs> I want y'all to come out and support this business. Although it's about me, oh, it really is not about me doing my um, book signing. It is really about promoting the book for, um, for these uh, amazing people. All right. Let me just say this, close out with this. Living in the projects, y'all. Rough and tough. Living in the projects, y'all. Living in the projects. You gotta be rough and tough. Watch your back, you might even get snuffed by the neighborhood. Mr. Snuffleupagus, a troublemaker in the real ghetto scientist, the best dealer of the land. He should use his ability to be a good salesman at a nine to five job black. Cause in the projects, a brother like that would get laughed at for being in the suit and tie scene. Cause the dress code in my projects, black hoods and black jeans. Brothers and sisters got the smarts, but it's useless if you got the brains and no heart. Daily routine, smoking blunts, cutting classes, and hitting the crib with a few stunts. Your brother's got fat gear. We drove the fattest of cars, and plus, our mamas don't even care. Just pay the rent and don't forget. And this is how I lived. Living in the projects, y'all. Rough and tough for watch your back. Living in the projects, y'all. Rough and tough for watch your back. Living in the projects, y'all. Early in the morning, right up on the corner by the liquor store. I used to sell dope and crack. Pockets looking like the mumps. I used to stop a few cars before they get to the speed bumps. Housing cops on patrol. A lot of people standing up in the front playing the nice role. Rocks get thrown at the knocks. Cause us people from the projects got that crazy heart. We did the wrong and the right thing. But we stick together when it came down to the street thing. Young girls are blowing up. Fat in the front. Having children with nappy hairs. But that's what's up. And then she started smoking crack. She found a new job and it's laying on her back. She used to be a fly cutie. Now she's the neighborhood skeezer. Giving up her booty. Hey, she smoked up a whole state check. About to get evicted, y'all. Living in the projects, y'all. Rough and tough for watch your back. Living in the projects, y'all. One, rough and tough, watch your back, living in the projects.
Listen, go get my book, Once Upon a Time in the Projects, The Lost and Found. You can get it on Amazon.com right now. I'm telling you, best-selling book. Come out, October the 12th, 1832 Kinsfield Road in Virginia Beach, Virginia. At the A-plus mailbox and more. Until next week. And listen, y'all know, listen, let me just say this. When you saw me do the swag in the morning with my wife, Lady D, you know a guest is coming, right? We interviewed the likes of Tony Terry was one of our first guests. Big Les was one of our second guests. Karen Parson, which is cousin Hillary from Fresh Prince. Um, I, I, we interviewed Roy Jones. Um, we interviewed Holyfield. We interviewed JJ Fad. We interviewed the 69 boys. We interviewed um, Dupree Kelly from Lords of the Underground. <laughs> we interviewed directors. We interviewed Karen White. We interviewed so many folks, so many to name. So you got to know, I got some guests coming, coming. <laughs>